Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In the last lecture, I showed you how to connect to a Cisco router or switch over the network. In this lecture, I'll show you how to make a direct connection using a console cable. Before we start, I'll give you a quick reminder that the lab exercises in this course used Cisco Packet Tracer simulation software. And you can see how to install and use that by watching section two, how to set up the lab. So for the lab exercises we're going to be using in the course, you don't need any physical devices and you don't need to install or use PuTTY. But when you go and you start working on real devices in the real world, you are going to need to know how to do this, how to make the initial connection to a physical device. So that's why I'm going to show you here. Cisco devices do not usually have a default IP address. So we need to set one up before we can connect to it over the network. As you saw in the last lecture, I used PuTTY to connect to the management IP address of the device. But what if the device does not have an IP address on it yet? Well, we need a way to connect to the device to do the initial configuration when we first buy it, including adding IP addresses. And that is where the console connection comes in. So with the console connection, we can directly connect to the device at a lower level below IP, get onto the command line there. Then we can get to do the initial configuration, including adding the IP address. And once we've done that, we'll then be able to connect to it over the network. So for that initial direct connection, you connect to the console port on the router or switch. I'll show you that in a second and you use a console cable to do it, which comes in the box with your device. And the console cable looks like this. You can see that it has got a serial DB9 connector on one end. It's called DB9 because nine pins go in here. And on the other side, it's got an RJ45 connector, similar to what you would see on a standard ethernet cable. But this is absolutely not an Ethernet cable. It's not using Ethernet and it doesn't require IP addresses. This gives you a low level direct access to the command line. Now, when you connect this into your router or switch, it's the RJ45 end that plugs into the console port on the device. And it is the serial connector that plugs into your laptop. And this gives us a problem because laptops don't come with serial ports anymore. About 20 years ago, they did. And serial ports were most commonly used to connect to old style 56K modems. They don't exist anymore. So manufacturers don't put the ports on our laptops anymore. So how are we going to be able to plug this cable into our laptop? Well, what we need to do is buy an additional USB to serial adapter. So you can see here, it has got a USB connector on one end and it's got a male serial DB9 connector on the other. So we end up having the USB connector plugged into our laptop or our PC. That then has the cable going into the console cable with the serial connectors here. And then we've got the RJ45 connector that plugs into the router or switch. Okay, so Cisco realized that that's a problem because devices don't have those old style connectors anymore. So with newer devices, it comes with a newer cable, which has got USB on one side to plug into your laptop and mini USB on the other side to plug into the device. Okay, so let's see how this looks on a router now. So I've got in front of me here an old 2600 router from Cisco. This used to be a very popular workhorse router. And you can see on the back here where I've got my finger now, that is the aux or auxiliary port. And that used to be used for out-of-band management with those old 56K modems. 
Again, they don't exist anymore, so that doesn't really get used anymore, this part. Next to it, we have got the blue console part. That is where I've got my console cable plugged in. Then I've got a couple of onboard ethernet ports on this particular router and a couple of slots up at the top here where we can put in optional cards. And I happen to have an ADSL card fitted in here. Okay, so I have got my router there with the console port plugged into it. And you can see at the other end of my console cable, I have got my USB to serial adapter here, and I'm gonna plug this end into my PC. Okay, so I've done that, and I've also plugged in the power lead in the router as well. So we're ready to make the initial connection to the device. The software that I'm gonna use for that is Putty again, the same as what I used to make a connection over the network. I showed you in the last video how to download and install that. Just as a quick reminder, again, you can go to Google and just search for Putty Download. And then the first link here, that is where you download and can install it from. Okay, so I've already got Putty installed on here. So I'm gonna open up Putty and the type of connection we need to use here to connect to the console port is serial. So I will click on that and you can see it's showing in here the serial line and the speed. You need to select your correct COM port on your computer here. So the way you find out that information is open up device manager in Windows and then look in your ports here and you'll see the COM port and it's usually COM3. Again, you need to have installed the driver software for the cable before this is going to show up. Okay, so I need to change this to COM3. Next thing is we've got the speed and there's actually more settings in this. If you go to serial over in the main window in putty here on the left, and there you can see again, I'm using COM3 for this connection and I need to have the correct settings here. The default settings are actually okay. So the speed is 9600. I've got eight data bits, one stop bits. The parity is none and I should set the flow control to none as well. But if you leave the flow control as the default, it will still connect anyway. Okay, so now I can go back to session up at the top here and I can click on open. And I'm not gonna see anything yet because I haven't powered my router on. So I'll just reach over here to the power switch on the back of the router and I'm flicking it on now. And you can see now I start getting output from the router. So you can see that when you connect over the console connection, as soon as you power the device on, you're immediately connected to the command line and you can view the device booting up. This is gonna take a few minutes to boot up here. So I'm going to speed up the video so we can watch it go through the boot up process. Okay, and that is the router fully booted up. And I see the message here, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? That's because I already factory reset this router. It's in the same state as if you bought a brand new router straight from the factory. So that's how you would connect to a new device and get to this prompt here and then start setting it up, putting on the IP addresses, etc. Now, hopefully it's obvious that it's not just for setting up new devices that you can use a console cable and the device does not need to be powered off when you first connect to it. You could have a device that's already fully configured and powered on and in your cabinet, you can connect to it with a console cable and you will immediately get to the live command prompt. Okay, so that's everything I needed to show you about how to use the console connection. Okay, so you saw there that when we get a new device from the factory, we can connect to it with a console cable to do the initial configuration, including adding IP addresses, and we'll then be able to connect to it over the network later. But the console part is not just useful for the initial configuration of a device. You'll often see that it comes in useful for troubleshooting as well. 
So for example, let's say that we are trying to connect to an existing device on its IP address, but we cannot connect to it. Well, often one of the first things you'll do in that situation is you will plug into it with a console cable to see what is going on because you don't need the IP address to be responsive to connect it over the console cable. Another thing is if a device just appears to be completely unresponsive, but you can see that it is powering on. So that indicates that the device is probably failing to boot up. Well, again, trying to connect it over the network is not going to work because the IP address on the device is not live until it has completed the boot up process. So if it's not able to boot up, it doesn't have an IP address on there, you're not going to be able to connect it over the network. But what you can do is you can connect it with the console cable, then power the device on. And when you do it that way, you can watch the device booting up. So if it is having a problem completing the boot up, you'll be able to see what's going wrong over the console connection. Okay, that was everything I needed to tell you here. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.